Episode 26, knockoff listeners, special uh, April 20th edition, uh, as our shit. North American folk would call it, uh, 420. It's uh, Homage. Cheers to that. Cheers to the Yew. 420, ladies and gentlemen. For those, uh, for those people who are living under a rock uh, or listening <laughs> to this podcast, I dare say everyone knows, has a pretty, pretty fair idea what 420 is. For those that don't, it's sort of the... Uh, Dedicated time of day for a, it's basically slang for the consumption of marijuana. Mm. Yeah, do you know what the actual uh, origin of it is? There's some sort of etymology to to 420. We'll have to look that. I was just yeah. it was the, sure. indicated for like the time of day as to like the sort of global smoking hour. I, mm. I thought, but uh, yeah, I know it's um I know it's basically that's what's celebrated. I think it might be something to do with a proposition 420 or something like that. So basically, everybody has paid homage to this thing by lighting up joints and stuff at, at that time of day and celebrating that day of the year. Yeah, and I was only telling the boys before, three years ago on this day, I was actually in the dam um, enjoying 420 because obviously Amsterdam. due to that time, like like Briss said, the uh, the whole 20th of April thing being uh, 420 is, uh, is a nationally sort of celebrated day in places like the states and Amsterdam and any other sort of of our weird loving brothers. Those big weed weed capitals like you've got Amsterdam, Vancouver's kind of one. I spent a four twenty in in Vancouver and they turn out like a motherfucker. Den- Denver now Denver is Ooh. kicking Denver, goals Colorado. up up there in the mountains, hit, hitting yeah. plenty of the reefer. It's yeah. uh, Nimbin. It absolutely that's yeah, a good sure Aust- Australian home of uh, the sacred plant. So if you are home having a, having a listen and you are indulging. No hate from us. It's not not for us personally, guys. Obviously, but uh, <laughs> go right ahead. Yeah. Tell you what, if someone it. who uh, who did rock up here, as if we got a guest on who wanted to smoke some reefer, uh, Rob Whitaker. <laughs> He's uh, got the ultimate man crush now on Rob Whitaker. What a fucking performance against Jacare. He looked outstanding, didn't he? You know, like and and that was probably a fight that a lot of people. Including myself, I reckon, wrote him off for. You know, I thought Jacare would be too much for him. I thought Jacare would pressure him, pressure him, clinch him, you know, sweep or take him, trip him down or something like that and just end up choking him, you know. But to his credit, Rob showed outstanding takedown defense, showed really good calm in some bad situations when Jacare took his back. And more than anything else, just showed what. Robert Whitaker does best and that's throw hands and feet, man. Like his striking is fast, you know, it's precise. Like he his timing is excellent, you know, like and, and he and he mixes up his striking beautifully. Mm. It's not just boxing, it's not just one dimensional. He, he's got leg kicks, high kicks, you know, like the full array of sort of, you know, uppercuts, jabs, hooks, and power. You know, he looked awesome. Much the same. I've tipped Jacare in that fight. I had a shocking night in the tips. Tips wise, I've been going pretty ordinary with my fight picks. I had uh, Jeremy Stevens on that card as well, mm. who, who went down. But I'd admittedly uh, tip Jacare as well. But Rob, to me, just seems like a twenty-five-year-old guy who's really starting to fill out into that one eighty-five body frame. Mm. He's Think looking he might be twenty-six, yeah, not he... not long-term twenty-six right. in, in December. But um, but you're exactly right, man. You you, you look at a a ten-year plus age age gap. Uh, Jacare is thirty-seven. Really, and, it, and it's that uh, you know that freakish testosterone, natural testosterone power that that you know people in their mid twenties. That's why I fight it. Mm. That's their He's prime. Half, you know, half yep. a yard quicker too. He he was he so beat Jacare to the punch. So every time. fucking quick. That that left jab that he just kept leading with, man, in and out. So fucking fast. Covers a lot of ground with his shots. He can yeah. be he can be out out of the pocket. Deceptively all of a sudden reaching, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, unbelievable. F- performance from him and mm. I think something that might be overlooked by the MMA fans of the world I mean people in Brazil I'm assuming here but people across Brazil and the US and into into Asia where they're looking at don't necessarily understand the rivalry between Australia and Britain in sports and having Bisping with that belt that could be a huge fight for both You're right. the UK go go have Rob Whitaker fight Michael Bisping in Manchester didn't think of do, it like do that. the do the whole yeah. whole ashes sort of setup thing, and I think that could be overlooked. But yeah, you know. well, I guess for anybody who doesn't understand that rivalry, so like obviously Australia were one of the countries that were colonised by the British, and uh, and the way in which they were colonised was that it was set up as a penal colony, and it was a bunch of convicts were shipped out here. So there was there's always been a um, uh, you know generational sort of knowledge of this this. Uh, conflictive relationship between mm. the between the two countries and you know uh, an Aussie sort of 
having a go at a at a at a British person is known to be rattling their chains. That's like a, a, a saying, you know, like, oh, you're just rattling your chains. So it's sort of, you know, they've always been able to take a higher sort of position to Australians because we were originally convicts. But obviously, you know, that's that's changed. We're now in 2017, mm-hmm. but there's still these deep, like, mem- like historical memories that, that, you know, fuel these fucking aggressions. But you're right, it's um, it could make for an awesome... Pitch that to uh, send that to Dana, that fucking yeah. soundbot, and be yeah. like, Man, that, "This is why Th- they." This is your marketing it. strategy yeah. right yeah. here, brother. Yeah. You need ah. some convicts. You need yeah. some change. That's you need it. some. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the only thing that would really be the to that uh, a disadvantage to that fight is that Rob isn't much for trash talking, and he isn't really no. good in terms of the and, banter. And, and he's his heritage lines are in New Zealand mm. anyway, in the Maori. Mm. So it's like it's it's yeah. I mean, he's fighting yeah. for a flag, but it's kind of the the whole sort of race thing is, he's, is uh, fairly he'd, he'd, irrelevant these he'd, days. His he'd rapport well with Australians though, so oh. he might not oh. he might not sell well in terms of you know a, a world scale where that that hype. You know, mentality is is sort of revered, mm. but he he would do well at Australian level where we don't like Mundine because he talks himself up, but yeah. we do like the humble people that mm. you know just go out there, Your put Pat rafters, yeah, and, yeah just Mick put Fanny put everything into it and and come out on top. You know, so yeah, Australians you get behind him big time. That's true. That's true. But um, yeah, I'd I'd fucking I'd love to see that fight, man. His his record um is. Peppered with green at the moment, man. Mm. He's he's fought a bunch of like seven straight or something. He's on he's on a a seven straight win. Yeah, the last streak, person he yeah. lost to was Wonderboy Thompson. Yeah, and and he's 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 got some good na- good names, tough dudes, you know, in that. But th- there is the argument, however, that really Jacques Ray is the only big name on there. You know, so I mean, that's what I was I was I was going to sort of allude to. So we've got Mike Rhodes, Clint Hester, Brad Tavares, Uriah Hall, Rafael Natal. Um, Derek Brunson and Jacare. All, all very t- tough guys, but you know that there, there is probably maybe two guys there in the top ten at, at most. He's doing the right thing though. But, um, by yeah, four of those uh, KOs. Mm. So yeah, that's, like, right. that's yeah. not fucking around. Definitely you know? finishing finishing people and working his way up the rankings. That's why people are saying title shot and things like that. And I'd love to see him fight Bisping and sort of strike where the iron's hot with that mm. potential rivalry because those two were scheduled to fight once upon a time. Mm. They were meant to fight in Melbourne, weren't they? Uh, or something along those lines. And Bis- Bisping came out today and sort of said that um, mm. that he would, just to tick Yoel off, thinks that B- Whitaker's mm. far more deserving of a title shot and would give Whitaker a title shot over Yoel. Mm. The, obviously, the, the drug cheat thing with uh, Bisping, mm. with Yoel Romero being a, like, an offender, that sort of doesn't sit well with Bisping at all, but... I think it would just be such a fun fight, a main mm-hmm. event like that. You know those two are going to stand. They both – we know Bisping can go 25 minutes. Mm. Bell, bell to bell, Bisping isn't going fucking anywhere against anyone. Anderson, Dan Henderson hung with all those guys for 25. Be interesting. Not, to, not to, Dan yeah. Henderson the first time. No, no, yeah, <laughs> that's a, yeah, re, rematch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rematch. But – and that you could argue that Dan Henderson won that fucking fight too. True, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. But Bisping's had a couple of close ones. Yeah, that if you had, had those two styles make fights, and Jesus, that would be uh, that would be fucking outstanding. Because I'd worry if, against Bisping versus Romero whether he just looks to try and take him down. And like, where mm. Bisping on the fence and stuff. Where you know mm. Rob and him are just un- mm. unbelievable. But you, you mentioned before about the Ashes, a place that I've actually been going, um, which is down Victoria Way, called Sunbury. Lately, is the birthplace of the Ashes. So I don't I don't know understand you probably maybe you can tell me Briss but like um how did the, the ashes started by like burning burning bales yeah, or something burnt, burnt like the that bales. and then put them in a little urn and then they play for like the the urn it is yeah so yeah I, I don't I really don't know if if that's a legit claim that somebody has but they have signs up saying that it's the birthplace of the ashes so I don't know how that that sort of translates into anything realistic or yeah, factual, yeah. but you know, <laughs> so yeah, but was it an eventful main event, really? Wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Go to uh, Demetrius Johnson, another victory for the Mighty Mouse, the 125 pound champ on that card. That was uh, like a next level shit from him. Another win, another finish. Just Talk went about to work. If, man, the, if yeah. this guy was 185 pounds, you, it's all hail the goat and the king. It would mm. be. He would be. Just so top tier, but it's just unfortunate that no one in 25 has stepped up to him with any sort of like bad blood rivalry sort of thing. Like yeah. 35 went somewhat stale for a minute. Up steps fucking Cody No Love, start tatted up, starting to talk heaps of mad shit to people. And 
like builds those rivalries. He doesn't have a heel at 25 where he's going to be forced to come up weight and fight bigger dudes, but he's better than ever, Demetrius, and I think he could hang with any of those top guys at 35. And and I'll give him the, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not being sour on Demetrius Johnson here by any means. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a massive Anderson Silver fan, so I am biased, but I still feel as though if you're going to have that greatest of all time conversation – that it can't just be about the title defences because fair enough he's tied Anderson's, you know, streak of 10 title defences, but Anderson had two wins in there at light heavyweight in inside like inside that streak. So, you know, like you've got to think that Demetrius is, is really two fights behind and he's two fights behind in a higher weight division, mm. you know. So I think that that Anderson streak holds more clout. But that's just my yeah. Opinion. It's all, it's like it's got to be dependent on the competition. If the division isn't as you know upper echelon as somebody else, then the streak means nothing. But um, yeah, I, I fucking you know think it only takes it only takes someone to come along. You know, like mm. people were having Aldo in the in the goat conversation for a long time, and um, it's sort of like oh, Aldo who was. now? Yeah, exactly. Everyone like, has no, their time and. Mm, you but, you know, yeah. C- Connor comes out with a flash knockout and it's like, you know, absolutely puts that guy on the shelf. So I think there's a clear sort of lack of competition going on at 125. And if there was, you know, like you're saying, more more rivalry in that in that division, then um, then maybe it would seem, you know, a bit more interesting to the, mm. to the general for, uh, fan. From Anderson's, so you're looking at guys that are going to leave legacies in MMA and 10 years' time... All of us here at the table are going to still remember Nate Mycourt, uh, Rich Franklin, Dan Henderson, Bonner, Charles Sonnen. Like all those names, we're going to remember them for those fighters' individual legacies. At twenty-five, we're not going to remember Wilson Reyes in no. in, in ten years' time. And I think that's no. what mm. gets uh, gets Anderson over the line if we're talking sort of that line Exa- of conversation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, but they were the main two fights. Was it? What, what, what else was on that? Um, Kansas uh, City. J- Jeremy Stevens versus. Uh, can't even remember his name now, but. Uh, Fifth ranked fighter in the world just looked uh, looked like same old Jeremy Stevens. If mm. uh, well, the hardcore fans would know what I'm talking about, there just with his style, with just planting his feet and looking for that home run, it might need to be a little bit of evolution if he doesn't if he does want to get to that title shot sort of status. Yeah, he, he sort of started to get desperate in that fight. He looked like I mean, and good on him for doing that because he realised that you know he was losing and and that he had to you know tr- and he was still trying to finish right to the mm. third, and that's what we want from every every fighter, I guess. But, you know, the, I agree with what you said. The way that he, he just doesn't seem to sort of set up his punches too much, he just wings them and, mm. and he's just looking for that home run hit from, you know, from outside. A, a technical guy like he fought, who you know, lit him up with that jab and all those inside leg kicks and stuff like that. You know, he's, he's going to get beaten by those sort of dudes, Definitely. surely. And um, UFC 210, we haven't, uh, we haven't podcast since the, uh, the Cormier win. Oh, what did you think about that? A lot of yeah. shit happened that weekend. Strange old weekend in Buffalo, New York, wasn't it? Eh? It was uh, between Daniel Cormier at the weigh-in with his well, – there was allegations that, that, he, that he cheated by holding himself mm-hmm. up on a towel to ditch weight off him. Uh, so he was – plenty of controversy around that. He comes out in a fight against uh, Anthony Johnson, who he'd fought before, comes out, and Rumble had had success on the feet against him and had – been dominated in wrestling and ended up getting submitted in that first fight. So what does Rumble do? Come up with the strangest game plan in his own mind. And in hindsight, looking back after the fight, Anthony Johnson took the loss and retired. Had he checked out mentally before even stepping into that cage? I think he had. He just looked to employ this game plan where Daniel Cormier, who's an Olympian and got super high-level wrestling, tried to play beat him at his own game when his only chance of victory for mine was to try and take his head clean off. And mm. Did try and get some shots away, don't get me wrong, but he didn't look to try and separate away from Cormier or anything and it was a, basically almost a mirror image of the first fight. Eventually just wore him down, got his back, rear naked choke finish. I, I, Strange. I looked could, dominant, yeah. I could easily believe if someone told me that that was a fixed fight, to be honest, you know, because exactly for the circumstances that you just explained, Briss, about, you know, really had he a clear best chance. And, and they, they said it in the commentary and I, I absolutely concur with that 100% that, you know, if, if that title fight, brain snap, you know, like you're at, at, ra- at close range, so you shoot him for a takedown, you think you're getting the better of it. 
whatever. You just have a brain snap. But like his, his corner and, you know, we're just screaming at him the entire mm. time about how bad a game plan that was. Henry Hooft, his trainer, said that was not the go- game plan going in. And Rumble would have known, hands down, his best chance was on the feet. And then he started clinching. And then even towards the end, when you saw him get his back taken, fair enough, he was eating some pretty big shots, but he was giving up his neck. Mm. He was like avidly lifting up his head for Daniel Cormier to, to put, sink that choke in. It wasn't like that was a, a swift transition from Cormier to slip that mm. choke in. It was like oh, obvious as shit. He just needed to lock it up, you know. See, but so, someone with his Daniel Cormier's calibre of grappling is going to mm. see that all day. And just, just to add a bit more controversy to 210, we're calling uh, the, yeah, the main yeah, event yeah. was, yeah, was r- at work. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion, yeah, in yeah. my opinion. That's, well, that, as, oh, a, as a um, tangent, what... What's that shit about? Um, apparently, the Korean card they're investigating currently for being fixed. I hadn't heard any of you that. You hadn't heard no. of that? No, I haven't no, heard that, that, was, that. That was that was news to me. But yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll oh, look it, it up. It had but, happened, um, man. It, it had happened in all sports. There's no way you could stop it from happening because at the end of the day, if you're a guy like Rumble and you've and and you're in that situation where you've got uh, an, another job to go to that's already locked down, that's you know going to pay you good money, that's with the LA Rams or whatever. And you've got a big fight. His win bonus might have been, what, like another 250000 or Exactly. He's getting paid regardless. Yeah, he's so. getting paid regardless. And then so obviously if, if some big drug dealer or, or, you know, whoever comes up to you and says, hey, man, I'll give you a million dollars if or, you know, mm. half a million dollars, double what you otherwise would have made if you if you allow yourself to get beaten in this fight – be like, I'm out of here anyway, mm. you know. Like, I mean, it doesn't mean anything to me winning the strap, you know. That's it. and It's, it's, it's yeah, all about the cheddar. Mm, that's right. So, yeah, it says uh, multiple reports are surfing, surfacing in Korea citing an ongoing investigation regarding fight-fixing allegations from the UFC's 2015 event in, Se- in Seoul. According to these mainstream media outlets in the country, a Korean fighter whose identity they kept hidden agreed to throw about but ended, ended up winning a decision against an American po- opponent. Um, the reports state that Fighter A agreed to dive for a hundred million, one roughly million, hundred million local dive, hundred million won, won rough, right. roughly eighty eight thousand yeah. dollars, uh, and put down a bet of fifty million won, roughly forty four thousand dollars on the opponent. Uh, after the Ooh. betting odds changed drastically in a short amount of time, it was stated that on the day of the fight, UFC officials constantly questioned the fighter about it and the possibility of nefarious activity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see, that's the locals doing some shady shit, I suppose. Mm. That probably couldn't be put down to the mm. UFC actually working fights, but no, as no. you say, it can be, look, man, we're going to load up on the other dude. You need to yeah. take a dive here. Like, and, you've got a one-fight contract, just do it. And that's what, that's what sort of gives you away, though, isn't it? Because they can they can pull the metrics mm. on, on the betting and shit like that. So yeah. they know if a, a big, big wad of cash has just been dropped down on, mm. on somebody, it's like... That's suspicious because mm, that's, right. no, that's at a large amount of money, and l- unless that person's a really yeah. rich person that we've heard of, mm. this is shonky as shit. And, uh, uh, and and it's it's fucking nothing new, man. Like no, the, that shit's been going on as long Absolutely. as the sport's been going on. Old Sonny Liston, mm. old. Um, I was going to say even uh, Ryan Tandy, rest his soul, uh, uh, NRL player in the oh, only in early two thousands was arrested on match fixing. Uh, charges mm. and uh, he'd fixed a game playing for the Bulldogs up in Townsville against the Cowboys and they'd monitored the betting lines and an absolute fucking avalanche of cash came for first points Cowboys penalty goal yeah right so, lo and behold one of the first sets of the game the Cowboys are down there say on like the on the 20 like uh, on their like the Cowboys are on the Bulldogs 20 Bulldogs are defending their line Ryan Tandy comes up to tackle the prop forward and just lays all over him in rugby league, which is a which is a penalty if for non league fans. Lays all over him, so the referee blows a penalty right in front of the sticks. And it'd been predicted to be a close game, so they're like, nah, they'll take the points for sure. And uh lo and behold, little Aaron Payne, the hooker from the Cowboys, runs in, fucking grabs the ball, quick tap, cross kick, kick to the corner to Ty Williams, and he scores. So obviously Aaron Payne isn't in on this sting. At all, and he sees an opportunity. Ah. So all these dudes have done their cash, and you see when they score the try, you see Ryan Tandy like with his hand, put his hands on his head, and just sort of like run under the sticks, just knowing that there's been like fucking three hundred grand put on Cowboys first point scorer. 
thinking, yeah, that wow. they're going to they're take the kick. And obviously, maybe some of the Cowboys, it was alleged that they might have been in on it as well. Yeah. But obviously, Aaron Payne wasn't, and they couldn't yeah. tell him as being vice captain. Yeah. He's seen the opportunity for the cross kick and fucking <laughs> blew it for everyone. You'd be, <gasps> you'd be like, oh. but they, they found, because they're like, hang on, there's an absolute avalanche of cash here. Yeah. And this bloke's given away the fucking easiest penalty you've ever seen. Like, mm. what's yeah. he doing? Like, yeah. Yeah, well, sports, like, it's, it, you know, it's got that real sort of, analogy to life where it's like you know we we say that oh you need to abide by a moral code as well as rules and you know there's rules but then there's like you know good sportsmanship and there's the, there's the way you play the game and mm. stuff but i mentioned sonny liston he was the um uh heavyweight champion boxer in 1962 mm, but um, yeah. super like controversial figure I th- he lost the title to um to muhammad ali didn't he did he, he mm. did yeah and and like reports that he'd been drinking the night before the fight and was like into into the smack into the heroin and stuff like that as well was he really? and, and he just uh, a big banger he th- mm. he threw a couple threw of bombs. um he threw a couple of fights as well i think he was in trouble for mm. is that right yeah. well it, it can happen people get caught up in cash and it's all sunny list in there yeah man yeah yep. yeah That's they him. talk talk about watching like the videos of of guys like him and um and George Foreman hitting a heavy bag, like and just sort of, you know, like folding it in half, you know. But I guess any sort of any heavyweight would would do that as well, which is a, which is an exciting fight that's coming up soon. Clitch um, yeah, cut. Yeah, sorry, sorry. You're right. Fucking, um, we haven't finished that two ten yet because oh, uh, no, no, Weidman uh, Masasi, man. Strange, what do you old, say? Strange old fight too. Well, entertaining fight. I liked the fight. It was it was good. Weidman really bought it to him. Straight up, I think on the last podcast, Chris and I tipped Weidman mm. on that. Uh, mm. Picked that, and he, I thought he looked good in the first. You know, he, he, went, he like, went back to went back to his sort of base of wrestling sort of thing. But Gaygard's a tough out for anyone. Gaygard mm. is just elite level, and I wouldn't be mad if they gave Gaygard a title shot. I wouldn't wouldn't be mad oh, at all. No. He's a guy who's been around for a long time. But I thought Weidman gassed. I think he almost yeah. went got too busy in the uh, in the first round looking for those takedowns and. Musasi, being good cardio fighter that he was, really started to uh, do work, and the whole thing it was farcical how that, how that ended. Really, with mm. the explain it for they people. went uh, so there's a couple of rule interpretations in MMA where the, uh, Chris Weidman was essentially bent over in a position where he had both feet and both palms on the ground, and uh, when all you've got four points down like that, you can't strike to the head at all. So with, Ga- with yeah, knees and that's kicks. right, yeah, with with knees or with any sort of like leg strikes, and he uh, elevates Chris Weidman's left hand off the mat, so he's only got three down, so he's allowed to knee him, and simultaneously did that, and the referees called time as if it was an illegal shot. That's basically what happened, wasn't mm, it? Like, yeah. So he called he called it an illegal shot, but there's no with the athletic commission they have strict rules about there's no instant replay or any sort of advice from outside the cage. Mm. So I think for I think to, yeah for in that state specifically. So that's where it even gets catchier as well. Like there's specific laws to specific, to specific states and all over the shop. So he Dan Bergliata, the referee, goes to goes to check on Chris Weidman and tells him he's got time. Basically, doesn't yeah. he? Like yeah. he said, you got five minutes. And I think Weidman at that point milked it for a bit of a breather as well. I think he was definitely hurt, definitely. but we've seen Chris Weidman hurt. But if you've seen the Luke Rockhold fight, he ate eighty punches off him. Like Weidman has mm. a chin, and I don't think he was going to be finished in that. Instant, but Stands if the, if the yeah. if the round went on, perhaps. But I think he was okay at the time and sort of took the took the breather because he had gone really hard in that first round. And I think he was a bit gassed out and rocked. But yeah, lo and behold, they go and the referee goes and checks a replay with Big John, who's out of the cage. He went and talked to Big John, mm. remember? And you're like, like, hang on a minute, there's no action replay allowed here. The referee's got to sort of stay in the cage. He's taking advice off another dude who's seen what's happened on a monitor. Mm. So that was just sort of farcical turn of events and they've ended up saying that, look, the strike was legal, which they only found out because of the benefit of the replay, which they said they couldn't use and call the fight a TKO. So Weidman's naturally spewing because he's been told that yeah. he's got five minutes to rest because it's a, an illegal shot that he's been hit with. And the doctor wouldn't clear him. Mm. So and the, the do- doctor yeah. said, well, it's taken you this long, so the fight's off. You're not, yeah, you're not good to no, fight anymore. Was, was it that? I think it was It was due to the, the rules. Yeah, they said it was a TKO. It was, it was more to the rules. The rules. It wasn't that Weidman wasn't prepared to keep going. It yeah, was that, that yeah. keeping on going wasn't even an option. Yeah, they sort of... Because... They, 
Masasi had finished him. Yeah, they were saying it was sort of a TKO that they've called the fight. Well, he, yeah, because so. the referee stopped the fight. Mm. So as soon as the referee stops the fight, that's a, a TKO. Yeah, you know? so, so he was, that's why Ro- like, Ro- ha- Weidman was, thought it was a, yeah. just an absolute robbery. And he, the whole turn of events where they interviewed Chris Weidman and stuff afterwards, I didn't, didn't like that either. I thought Weidman no. should have been out of the cage at that point. Like he was, would have been rocked. He's, he's bitter and twisted and he's talking about... Everyone, his allegiance of supporters, like yeah. following. It was just a real cringeworthy Awkward, moment yeah. for him, and yeah, probably shouldn't have gone there. You can understand but, uh, people wanting to get his take on it, though, because mm, obviously we were all, we were already five minutes down the track by then. As you said, Weidman wasn't finished, so he mm. was rocked, but it wasn't like he was knocked out cold, and he, and he had a considerable time to recover for mm. the reasons that you mm. just explained. You know, who are uh, Gagard Masasi now? Who who fights him next? I, I want to see you all. I want to see Yoel in fight Gagard for really? sure. Yeah. You oh, make Yoel have a weight or has yeah. he earned his shot? No, nah, he has earned his shot. They've all earned their shot, you know. Like I mean it's it's tricky because Yoel's seven straight, Whitaker's seven straight, you know, Jacare was seven straight, you know, you got Luke Rockhold who's you know, in the conversation but has, he's not there yet. Has Luke Rockhold ever fought Gagard? No, they were I'd different, to, different weight divisions at Strike Force. Gay guard versus Rockhold could be Absolutely. the best fight you've ever seen. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy when you compare it to like 205 or something at the moment. Mm. Eh? Yeah. There is... And all of a sudden, a win over fucking Corey Anderson gets you a title shot apparently. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Jimmy Manoa. Like, some, some of those... Get the fuck out of here, yeah. man. Some of those... 210 Jimmy Manoa yeah. was in the crowd man, as yeah. the, uh, you know... As the heel, like, yeah. oh, there's this fight. When we're like, just make the fucking Jones fight, yeah. please. Yeah. Like, so just true. How many times have you made it and it's fallen through and you're not going to make it again is, well, uh, we still haven't seen it dick lickers mm. <laughs> <laughs> is john jones pulling for a tune-up fight oh, pa- that, that shouldn't it. shouldn't be allowed to get one mm. that's our angle on it anyway mm. like just trying to read between the lines of all the crappy le- mm. read online i guess about it it seems like he's looking for a, a tune-up fight but you know jones is so good that yeah. he doesn't need it you know nah. he, i'm sure he can He'd, he'd probably be better with it don't get me wrong but i, I as an avid john jones mm. disliker I want to see him going fresh. I want to yeah. see DC going with a bit of a, you know, a bit of confidence yeah. in that that aspect. John, well, anyone John who's Jones. seen the John Jones OSP fight knows that he mm. that he has suffered ring rust before. He you has. would think, yeah. yeah, ring rust in one. And if he, John Jones, went and snorted a bunch of blow and got on, drank a bunch of piss the weekend before he fought the best Alexander Gustafson there's ever been. Mm. That was the best Gus you've ever seen in that yeah. fight. He yeah. just fought. Above and beyond his potential that night in a dog fight with John Jones, and John still beat him. Yeah, you know what I mean. He mm-hmm. could, could party the week before. I think the, it was John's fault that he had to pull out of the uh, MSG where the, those two were due to fight against when Cormier had to fight Anderson Silva because Jones pulled out. He's already got the shot. He had the shot. He just blew it. Mm. It's your shot again. Like, just come get it. Mm. He's it, like, it's it, it's an interesting one with Jones because he's had a lot of time on the shelf now. And when mm. you talk about yeah. That Rob Whitaker spec prime that just all of a sudden you're in it, you know, mm. and you're fucking killing it and you're in the zone. Like, John Jones had an incredible streak of defeating a whole bunch of stalwarts in Hall the of UFC. Famers. Hall of yeah. Famers. Potential, future Hall of Famers. And now he's, you know, done that for a few years and sat on the shelf for a year and maybe a bit and had a couple of fights. But, do you know, is it... Is, One. You know, do, it, is the best John yet to come, do you think? or? Yeah, I, I really I, – I don't know the answer to that question. I think that he's absolutely still going to be for years and years and years on end, you know, right up at that elite level of every single one of his fights yeah. you want to watch and you yeah. know he's competitive. But, you know, like we saw with Ronda Rousey and like we saw mm-hmm. with, you know, when – Nate Diaz beat Conor McGregor and all those like moments where you just where we're erupting in a living room somewhere because you're watching Daniel Cormier with John Jones badly rocked, full mount, raining down punches, going, I'm about to see John Jones yeah. finished here, you know? Mm. Could happen. The thing is he's doing uh the argument against sort of the ring rust and things like that, potentially anyway. He's done I'm just looking at his record here. He's had two fights since yeah, January 3, 2015 against Cormier, then April 23, 2016. So he's mm. fighting on average basically as much as a Mayweather would. Mm. Mayweather's coming out once a year like towards the end. Yeah. 
Sweet. for way less money. Yeah, for, yeah. Well, and John's is doing it for fucking significantly less. But and John's I think done- that sort of freak athlete like that and those freak sort of guys can maybe get away with doing that. Yeah, so, mm. yeah, definitely. And and that's that's sort of for a while there what Anderson was doing anyway. He was only really I think defending the, the yeah. strap once a year. Shit, I don't know. I feel like they're two different games though. Mm. That's two cool. different games: fighting MMA at two oh five and fighting boxing with huge gloves at one. 35 or whatever Floyd fights. It, yeah. if, if history One, um, has taught us anything, it's it's that MMA fighters seem to have more success when they stay busy. Mm, and, and, that's and fair. Dana's, Dana said that over and over and over again, that, you know, you got to got to keep busy mm. and, and ring rust is r- real, even if Don McCruz yeah. doesn't think that. And uh, but, uh, we didn't touch on it. Speaking of not staying busy... Um, Rumble is retiring now after that fight. Yeah, Matty yeah, yeah, man. Before. Yeah, yeah. We t- we touched touched on that. What he's doing. I was saying oh, like okay. how he might have mentally checked out before that fight, just with his game plan and shit yeah. like that. But he hung him up and moved on to other things like L A Rams. Like um, you mentioned, he's probably think he has a job with a professional football organization yeah. now. So well, he wasn't the only fighter to retire on that card either. Cote. Yeah, uh, how, yeah. How, ri- how ripped off with the predator field. Yeah, yeah. definitely. All, all that, all that love getting thrown rumbles away. No one even mentioned that Cote retired as yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He got a, f- a good reception too, and he's a yeah. journeyman fighter and journeyman. pretty popular dude. And really big in Canada. Great fights. Yeah. definitely, man. First so. guy to ever take uh, Anderson Silva to three rounds. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. the predator. Good Tiago on. Alves looked great in that fight, man. Yeah, he, he looked, looked like, on point as well. Renewed, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And there's a guy who's been around. Forever is is you know like in his I think he's thirty maybe but um has been around forever mm. but is still looking f- yeah, fantastic was in the UFC at twenty one yeah absolutely that, fantastic you know full of sauce at that age maybe too maybe if you, if you maybe. saw him ooh. although you know he's Dan- maintained Danny mentioned it in the in the in the telecast but you know he. Physique wise, looked really good too, you know, and he always does. He's he's always got that sort of that jacked physique anyway, but he looked good, you know, like he looked lean, he looked strong, he was, you know, cut up, and yeah, he definitely looked. His was, performance showed. He was circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was fucking bar- yeah, barring yeah. up watching yeah, it. Yeah, he was, he was <laughs> just so sweaty. Yeah, he was fully yeah, cut up. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, just bald Latin S- man. Like, where he was <laughs> using baby oil or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, you oh, so clear. All to- <laughs> talk about like uh, American sports and shit today. Did you hear of uh, Aaron Hernandez? No, yeah. you mentioned this before the podcast, yeah, but I've never a, even uh, heard the name before. He's a guy. Uh, Recently played for the New England Patriots, so they're like part of that Super Bowl team, like with Brady and like the lot. Just the the blue ribbon team of the NFL was the young superstar playing for them. How old was he? Uh, when he was playing for them, like twenty two, twenty three, like straight straight out of college, a big uh, Latin American guy. True. And uh, absolute superstar signed a five year extension for forty mil guaranteed money, and. That's sort of without a cent of any sponsorship dollars or anything like that either. So on on good coin for NFL wages, got sentenced to uh, got sentenced to life in prison for uh, murdering a guy in a shooting, uh, gang banging. What? Yeah, yeah. Really? Still, still uh, like regularly took angel dust and just hung out with fucking crooks and gang banging and got in a got in a shooting. Went to uh, went to see a guy over uh, some sort of debt in a parking lot and just got out and fucking laid him out with a piece. And he's the tight end for the New, New England Patriots. Really? Yeah, at oh, the time. So just what the fuck was he thinking? Ca- caught up caught up in the wrong crowd and um Well it's just probably up, always in that crowd and, and yeah, was like, oh. you know, these are my boys, you know, like yeah. I'll, I'll stick with them because, you know, everyone else is fake and just not realizing that no, bro, these are the people yeah, you need to be staring right. at. But at off. the same time though, he wasn't a, a local. Uh, he moved to the New England Patriots. Oh. Like he would have gone to college and other places and shit. To Matt, either way, in yeah. the fucking bad crowd. Fuck. And uh, mm. has got got caught uh, murdered this guy in cold blood. Ended up getting sent to prison, and they start digging up another case. Oh. They're like, no, nah, there's another double murder here that uh, we think oh, it's seems Aaron to fit the bill. And uh, shit. T- on last Friday, he got cleared. So he's still doing life. He's doing life oh. for the original murder. So yeah, he's uh, yeah. uh, behind bars for life. Gets acquitted of these two. They're like, no, it w- wasn't him. Uh, today, writes uh, John three John three sixteen in Nico pen on his forehead and hangs himself by a sheet in his cell. So, oh yeah. my god, man, that's a rock and roll mm. story. Yeah, Fuck. like a young guy, yeah. and he's twenty seven now. So he's done a couple of years in. So he's only twenty four when he goes in, just out gang bang and ends oh, up. That's how, that's Jesus. how he went out, but. I was sitting there, and the mind, the mind, uh, the mind wanders with that sort of stuff, and you're wondering, 
he was a, a Latin American guy, and I believe he killed an African American, and he was in Gen Pop in the prison as well. So mm. you know the the fallen hero sort of yeah. yeah. I can fucking I'm gonna go beat up the fucking pro football player. Would he have a target on his back because of his status sort of thing, or would his fucking I think you'd have to probably essays have his back and shit in there too. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't know. Three three dudes who have only ever watched like prison movies, just like yeah. what do you reckon For happens sure. yeah, to yeah, him yeah, in there, yeah, bro? Yeah, well, yeah, this is yeah, what yeah, I reckon. Yeah. For I'll sure, know. in the joint, man. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you exactly what yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, fucking crazy, man. Mm. It's just you know some some individuals their flame just burns brighter and harder and shorter and yeah. and you know that it's it's pretty unfathomable for somebody like us who you know lives a fairly fairly regular life. You're not sort of out there doing anything crazy extreme like the you know most extreme stuff out of our friends is probably you know guys getting in MMA fights and mm. competing and stuff like that. Like That's it. you know, there's no there's no gangland mm. situation where we're at you know and no. and and a lot of people would agree the same and fuck man it must just be crazy to be living to be living out on the edge like that you know or Whoa. just just even in somewhere like an unfortunate circumstance where you were just surrounded by that, that but was you weren't involved kill or be in it. killed yeah, yeah. like you yeah. lived in, lived in Compton because you couldn't afford to yeah. live anywhere else and you oh, know oh man i watched all, this all times fucking just... documentary on <laughs> Ugandan child soldiers the other day. That shit is fucking gnarly, man. Just somebody rocking Blood up. Blood Diamond? No. no, no, no. <laughs> this was, uh, it's called, um, it's on Netflix. It's called like The Road to Freedom Mountain or something like right. that. <clears throat> but basically this uh, child soldier, no, no sort of older than us, like maybe mid-20s, um, early 30s at the most, uh, grown and reformed and, and oh. fucking... Some of like the the memories that he's got and stuff like that, and he basically goes through this village in Uganda talking to all of these people about their memories of it. So like people who stayed in the village and were fucking mutilated by child soldiers and stuff, like ten year olds, and they they all say you know the the eight to eleven year olds are are the fucking worst man. They're the like because they don't really understand no what they're doing. They don't have a they don't have a conscience yet, you know. So they they're just programmed and they're completely brainwashed to go do some of the most heinous shit to people like cutting fingers off and way worse, way mm. worse, like, you know, rape and murder and all sorts of shit. And, um, and then they're fucked. They're absolutely fucked. Like mm. when they grow up and if, even if they get free, they're never free because they're totally fucked from what they've done as a kid, you know. Yeah. They're trying to live this normal life and, and reassociate back into a village but everybody knows that they've just done all this fucking... Oh. Insanely evil mm. shit. Of uh, it's worst example possible. But in Blood Diamond, remember at the end where he gets reunited with his son, and he's like, "You are a good boy. You like football and school. Like having to sort of remind his own son who he is personally. Yeah. That'd be that'd be shit for the, like that for oh. days. Yeah, out that there. that'd be like the you know the Hollywood version mm. of it. Like, oh yeah, that's right. I am a good boy, and I do like football. Yeah. Yeah. The reality of hey it pops, is, yeah, sorry man, yeah, that's you, some, you dad. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. some like Credits you know irreversible. PTSD yeah. Yeah, it's oh, sure. fucking insane and, and you're walking around with your with no forearm essentially yeah. as well they do yeah. a lot of uh, mutilating as you Oof. said another doco Chris and I actually watched last night on, on Netflix fucking Netflix need to sponsor this shit because yeah. I'm fucking <laughs> shout out we should just start I'm filming episodes you, and putting it on I'm there. getting oh. your customers. <laughs> yeah. Start, to get it, start filming the potties on Netflix yeah, yeah, so we yeah. get our own special um, just from called, sucking their uh, dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Fear of the 13th and it's basically a dude who um, probably, spoiler alert, so it's not actually that good if you if you want to watch it, but I don't, I don't know. It sort of sets it up suspensefully so that you don't really know what's going on until later in the documentary. <laughs> and now but, I'm going to tell you. And now I'm going <laughs> to tell you. So turn it, turn it down for like the next 45 yeah. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, basically this dude, he, he grew up rough and he grew up carjacking and fucking doing some sort of hood rat type shit. Was was you, you find out he was raped like in in the woods by by a twenty year old dude when he was like eight and shit like that. So you know similar sort of thing where it's like he's gone through fucking traumatic shit that's that's turned him into a different human being, you know. Mm. And um, and then this sort of string of events where he basically got um he got arrested for. What he, because he's basically the narrator of this documentary. So he says that they're trumped up charges of like 
uh, attempt to attempted kidnapping of a police officer, attempted uh, torture and shit like this, but basically got in a scuffle with the dude at a road stop when he was in a excuse me stolen car, and um, and then so when he's in when he's in sort of jail for this and he's awaiting trial. He, he hatches this plan in his mind because he hears about a rape murder case that happened in like a, a town that he knows about or something like that. So he says that he has information on it and he basically, you know, says, if you let me go off this charge of kidnapping a police officer, then I'll give you information about this rape murder case. Just made it all up but off, off knowledge that he had. Implicated a dude. Implicated a dude who he thought was dead. The guy turns out to not be dead and he's totally like reformed and, and living a good life and stuff like that. So his story doesn't check out at all. So all of a sudden the police are looking at him like, you've got all this information, we're going to charge you for this rape murder case. So now he's facing two charges. He goes to court for the first charge which is this, um, you know, story from a police officer that didn't quite add up. The jury throws it out, not guilty on all charges. And then he's still facing this rape murder murder charge. And back in like 1981 or something it was, um, they didn't have any sort of DNA testing. So he just had the, – the most cutting-edge technology that they had was blood type testing. So he just happened to share the same blood type as the – the dude who, who raped and murdered this chick. So anyway, that's enough for a for a, a court to convict him completely guilty life in prison. Death row, bro. Death row. Death, death row. row. He gets put on death row and then like DNA evidence like ends up coming to fruition later on. The fucking cops lose it, which pretty much like cancels his whole case out. Fifteen years. Yeah, fifteen years, but he ends up getting out. But um, in the end, but he, he did fifteen years. Did fifteen years, and then they, and then obviously it gets himself out because yeah, he went in in like eighty eighty one um for this for this shit or whatever, and then uh gets out in like two thousand and. Mm. Two was it? No. Seems seems so. We'd, I don't know if it was fifteen years. Would would yeah. be exactly like you said before. Would be so probably inside deranged, but you know, came across in the in the thing. I like really articulate. You know, really intelligent, all that sort of stuff. But um, he was even talking about um, that in the in the sort of like the 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 heavy like the maximum security section that he was in that. They had these like 40 by 40 sort of cage, exercise cages where people would come out and, and ex- do their exercises for one hour. But the the guards, if like people, like two dudes in the, in the ward didn't like each other, you know, or whatever had beef, would set it up. So they'd just like bring them both out at the same time, like set up their own UFC and just like put them in they the cage. And, and gladiatoring or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that and just bet on who they thought would get the better of it, you know. So, Jeez. But you kind of almost would. Like if you had two dudes – I know this sounds awful, but if you if you were like a, a security at those sort of places and you had two dudes that were going to probably end up stabbing each other in the showers anyway, you just pat them down from all, for all their – you know, the shit that they've got on them and just like – Fucking sort your shit out. Someone's going to get their punch, teeth punched out and it's going to be a yeah. good fight to watch. But then somebody's going to get stabbed after the fact even. Like, That's true. I don't know. That's I don't true. Know. I don't even know. I don't know either. I'm talking you, out of my you, you be, I've seen. You, I've you seen beat footage. my boy, stab, stab. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I've like, seen but footage. I see what you mean though. You, you could essentially prevent a murder in that way as well though too. Yeah. If you're like, look, go and fucking settle it. You both got five minutes. Yeah, it mm. could go either way, yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. It's certainly low. Like, I've seen footage of... Um, <laughs> of communities up in North Queensland and shit like that where police officers are just letting people fight yeah. it out in the dirt and shit like that. Yeah. And I don't know, like it, sometimes it doesn't look real flashy. No, no, it certainly looks uh, looks glorious on TV where there's cameras and lights and the, it's a rule, it's a very rules different and everything. Thing when you're on Instagram and you're watching a street fight. There's, Absolutely. It, there's an energy to it that's completely different. So anybody who says a cage fight where there's all of these people around, there's doctors, a referees, ref, yeah. judges... <laughs> Everything like rules. security guards, rules. It is not a fucking street fight, man. Like you watch a street fight where some somebody gets their fucking head kicked like a soccer ball on the street. On the yeah. concrete, yeah, it's a different different vibe completely. That, that's to it. yeah, that yeah. Because these two, we got it's not arts. We have uh, yeah, exactly right. We have sportsmen coming out now yeah. who are like, yep, touch gloves, martial, shake hands at the end. Artists, that's right. Well, yeah. oh, well done. Nice combinations you landed on me there. That was uh, that was impressive. With that said, anyway, we might uh, might take a brief interlude. We did say it was the four twenty edition. Uh, you can make your own minds up what uh, what the ad break will be. But uh, see you in a sec. And with that, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. 
How was that, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Rejuvenating break, mate. Good break, man. Uh, yeah, just black coffee in front of me now, so I really, really perk <laughs> up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you guys talking about in the break? Uh, covered, we covered a lot of content <laughs> in, in the break as well, but one thing that we uh, started a discussion about on an MMA front, we're just fiends for it, so just constantly talking about it. Uriah Faber got a position in the UFC Hall of Fame at the at the weekend. I'm a Uriah Faber fan, but in terms of a Hall of Fame, mm. where these like a Hall of Fame to me is sort of like a the Immortals in rugby league or a highly highly credentialed person. Where if you're in the NBA and you don't have multiple championships, there's no fucking way you're in the Hall of Fame. Same, NFL same sort of principle applies. Like get your Super Bowl ring, then get in the Hall of Fame. Uriah didn't win a belt in the UFC and it was never at any point an interim belt holder. Did he have an interim at one point? Um, maybe, but that's maybe. The, that's beside the point to, to me. I think you need a multiple title defenses. A Hall of Fame should be the absolute, the elite of the elite and his record to me just didn't say that. Uriah yeah. came up short. WEC Hall of Fame probably, yeah, I'd probably put him in that organisation. Like, But the, the UFC, to be up there alongside some of the names in there, just not sure he belongs in that yeah. calibre. And, I mean, there was a time, like we were discussing at the start of the podcast, that that people during their time, like Aldo had his time and Anderson had mm. his time and Demetrius is having his time, there was a time there where Uriah Faber was the pound-for-pound pound best fighter mm. in the world. Well, obviously, Fatal was still in that conversation mm. and, and all that sort of stuff at the time. But, but at that time, he wasn't a UFC fighter, un- yeah. owned by the same banner and yeah, stuff. But yeah. Just the, yeah, the absolute, the elite, the elite. All the names you rattled off there are going to be Hall of Famers. So mm. to my argument is if you have Uriah in, where does it stop? Do yeah. you have, yep. is TJ Dillashaw now a Hall of Famer as well? Well, if he's in, you've got to have Dom. Well, yeah. Cody got the belt now too. That's he, Uriah never got a belt. Cody got it. Like I, hope you, it I hope it doesn't turn into no, that. That's where, right. Like, that's um, that's my concern with it. that gets a title gets in the Hall of Fame. You yeah, know? it shouldn't be like, well, if, you know, if, if Uriah's so, in, why isn't Robbie Lawler? Or mm. things like that. Exactly. It's like you know, it, where does it fucking stop? Yeah. So apparently, there's two wings of the Hall of Fame. There's the um, modern era wing, and there's the pioneer wing. Right. right. So the pioneer. So that modern era one end up be fucking two hundred deep if they're not careful, sort of thing. Like yeah. McGregor will go in, Aldo will go in. Well, like, so yeah, far, right. so far, it's got Forrest Griffin, BJ Penn, and Uri Faber. See, he d- he's not in the same conversation as them. Yeah, GSP goes Im- is yeah. immediately in once he retires. Absolutely does. Even even if he came out and lost three fights straight and yeah. retired, he'd if still you go have, in. If you have Uriah, you have to have yeah. Nate. Yeah. If you have Nate, you've got to have Carlos Condit. I know, I know like, we're like... Shit like that. It's Anderson like, where Silva? Does it, where, oh, of course. Of course. He's the, basically arguably the GOAT. He goes straight in. Yeah. Like, he's automatic, basically. But I think there is rules around you have... In other sports where you have to be retired for a certain amount of time before you can get nominated, yeah. but Uriah hung him up inside 12 months ago and he's straight in. So You're right. Yeah. Where, where does it stop is my point. I can understand, though, that that choice because he was sort of a little bit of a and, – and all the other fighters in those mm. divisions will admit it, but a pioneer of, of building the credibility of that – Lighter weight division, the yeah. inclusion of it, it, would, it wouldn't have it, wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for Uriah Faber. It. it must have been why he gets the nod. Essentially, they, th- they really invented like the UFC bought those divisions to you know to the UFC because they had a mm. marketable champion in Uriah Faber. Mm. You know, they thought he was going to be the the poster boy to bring it up, just like Ronda Rousey put women's MMA on mm. the map and you know and all that sort of stuff. So I, I definitely give him props there. Just be concerned as to how large it could get. And yeah. Where do you cut it? And then you're like, oh well, you didn't. You put Faber in, but you didn't put Cowboy. And like yeah. this dude's getting sort of. I think it has potential to be fucking massive if they they really need to stick to a strict criteria to that, or it takes away from it. You're right. It can't be subjective. It's mm. got to be something you know something definitive that. Yep. You've had this many for oh actually I don't know how do you how do you put that because you can't well, go the, pi- oh. the pioneer wing is uh, Royce Gracie obviously yeah. Ken Shamrock Dan Shamrock, Severin yeah. Randy Couture Mark Coleman Chuck Liddell Matt Hughes Tito Ortiz Pat Militich Bas Rutten Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. Big Nog. Big Nog's in there. Yeah, man. And Don Fry. See, if none of those... They're in a pioneer wing. They're the guys... We wouldn't be having this conversation if those guys weren't out there slinging Mm. in in the early dark ages. So it's almost like a participation award there where they're absolute pioneers of the game. But if you're talking, yeah, like the the other side of it... When when would you have very first seen 
mixed martial arts or like or, or UFC because that that was the first version of it. Maybe when would you have seen the tape or the cassette? Remember tape seeing or, um, Tank Abbott footage in sort of maybe o two o three, like very how old very would you rare. Have been? 14, 15, yeah. sort of thing. Seeing that and being like, ooh, mm. I don't know where I, where I stand with that. But then, yeah, I was talking about maybe, before through, through tough. Maybe. But uh, I, I'd seen that sort of footage, mainly through like, which that sort of died in the arts a little bit, didn't see that regularly. And then uh, along came Kimbo mm. Slice. Yeah. So Kimbo was a lot of the, bit of a pioneer for this sort of shit as well. Yeah. For mm. me anyway. Yeah, I, I had a mate who, um, who similar sort of age when we were sort of 14, 15, 16, somewhere around that. Um, Owned, his parents owned a video shop and he had the the first three UFCs, like UFC 1, UFC 2, UFC 3 and was just telling us about it at the back of his house and he's like, man, the, this guy who like dominates these like world fighting sort of, um, you know, events or whatever where they can just no holds barred, you know, is – is just this little dude who, you know, like in this little like who puts people in submission holds and shit. He's in this little karate suit yeah. or something. Yeah, and I was yeah. just like, oh, yeah, we'll watch this. Like, and you're just watching it. And it was, it was such a freak show, mm. you know, because you had the dude floating around some with street one, fight one shit. glove. And what year would that have been, like, Royce Kima? That was like 93 or something, wasn't it? Was that when they first bought it? Yeah, UFC probably. won? Yeah, it that would have been in the early 90s. I would have been in high school in the. Throughout the m- l- late nineties, so ninety three November twelfth. Yeah, right. There you Denver. go. And we had the first three tapes, so you got to think that they're probably three events that they've already put on the board by the time and the period in time. You got it on VHS. Yeah, it was on VHS. And it's yeah. tourna- tournament format in those days too. Yeah, on those events. you had to fight like two and three times yeah, a night. Right. See, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Hoist he fought three times to win. Yeah. So. Got a submission over Patrick Smith in the quarters, so progress automatically through to that sort of stage because it is only like an eight-man tournament or whatever. Uh, sleeve choke, Kem Chamrock in the uh, in the semi-final Fuck. tapped yeah, him 50, 50, I've seen that. after fifty-seven seconds, and Ken was a beast, jacked to the fucking eyeballs on in steroids. That, uh, yeah, Fuck absolutely. Yeah. And that's not allegedly; that's guaranteed. <laughs> Comes out in the main and he gets a rear naked after a minute forty-four. And yeah. then we're here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind him seeing him. I don't. I don't know if it's even possible these days with commissions and stuff. If they did sort of progress into maybe like the odd two night tournament or something, like what one night tournament with yeah. two fights for dudes, like see Demetrius fight Wilson Reyes and then come in with Cruz in a quarter final or something. Imagine that. <laughs> if you had enough money, I'm sure that you could actually float it. You know, you just have to. You wouldn't be able to. You get it sanctioned in Russia. I fucking guarantee that. Yeah. But you know, so if if you had the sort of dollars and you were a Russian billionaire who had just infinite, infinite amount of money that you could, you know, once Demetrius Johnson comes off contract or whatever, you know, go, hey, listen, I'm going to put my own league together and I'll give you, you know, five times what you're currently getting or whatever and you could just pit people, you know, multiple people against each other. Everyone's got a price. Mm. Everyone's got a price. And, it, I mean, you, you hear interviews with dudes like Rory McDonald. They're all for that old style of, you know, tournaments, mm. head, head stomps, soccer kicks, you know, like, I mean, the, the full bo- head butts, the mm. full box and dice. I think Rory used to say that yeah. until he went five rounds with Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, keep that shit away yeah. from and me. And I don't think, I think that would be the norm that. either. Like, uh, he, his nickname is the... Red King. Uh, what yeah. was it before, though? The Psycho or something like that. Natural Born Psycho or something. That's Carlos. No. He's the natural, natural born, born killer. killer. What, yeah. what was Rory's uh, American thing? Psycho? It was like Ares. Ares, yeah, 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 yeah was. that's right. I swear he had a Psycho one on no, one. I think point. that people like that giving him that yes. persona. Like yeah, he looks like a fucking serial a killer. Psycho. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah. Getting around in that slick. Uh, he did at that stage too. Mm. He mm. did just at that expressionless stage. face, yeah, just sort of cold, cold and full fucking full focus like uh, American Psycho. Fucking mm. yeah, he was he was nuts. <laughs> American Psycho just <laughs> having sex with heaps of, <laughs> heaps of hookers and then murdering them. Yeah, <laughs> that's our Rory man. Yeah, he's got. A <laughs> that's a fucking wild movie oh, and dude. presumably book. I've not read it, but um, really? Amer- American Psycho, Christian Bale, fucking man. What's his ghastly ca- what's his performance. Name in that? Patrick uh, Bateman. Patrick Bateman. Mm. Right. Man. Mm. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it a few times. It is rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. It's a wild flick. Yeah, him in his office. Just he's a wild, he's, he's a wild quite... actor. That. Um, <laughs> That uh, method actor Christian Bale. Christian Bale, yeah, yeah. he's a wild actor. As his blow up in uh, Terminator, 
You seen yeah, that on the set? Yeah, I have seen. But the same time, I can understand that too. He'd be fully in character. Yes. And you got this some fucking idiot on the set just getting in the shot and completely fucking it. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Dropping like, their nah. mic. Like. It's like fuck it. Stop. Stop. And he stop. did. He did the Machinist after he did American Psycho. And anyone who's seen either of those movies will know that in American Psycho, he's like ripped and jacked and looked like he was carrying a lot of muscle mass and. Um, in The Machinist, he plays like a, an intensely anorexic person and he basically just starved himself for the next like three months to drop weight to a ridiculous measure, like almost like where doctors were just telling him, stop, you've got to stop this, like this is going to kill you and shit. Google a picture of Christian Bale Machinist. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen and, it, yeah. Um, <laughs> Holy It's stomach turning, yeah. <clears throat> That's uh, but, um, McGregor at 45. Like, <laughs> eat your heart out. Way worse. That's oh, Travis yeah. Luter. <laughs> That's Travis Luter, Anderson Silva. He looks yeah, so you, drawn you, out there. You put oh. yourself in that position where you've literally starved yourself for months and then you're on set, like, trying to put this intensely art- artistic performance together, presumably. And then, yeah, some fucking dingus graduate is like talking or gets a text while he's supposed to be operating the light <laughs> and shit. Yeah. Like,. Yeah. You might just spray him for yeah. oh, f- fucking 20 minutes. For yeah. sure. <laughs> they actually have a – there's a comparison photo you can find on Google Images yeah, too. Yeah, there you go. After that is I guess he wasn't, he wasn't that big no, in – um, still cut up. He looks a lot he's different. He's ripped up. Yeah, he looks very different. Yeah, yeah. There's so much more muscle mass no, that you've just lo- – like uh, effectively your body's just eating itself. Mm. So know, he was doing an apple a day. What's that atrophy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah, apple a day, keep the doctor away. I read this interview where he said, like, at one point somebody came up to him and said, "Your ass has fallen off," and he basically he looked and his ass had just like dropped. <laughs> like this is the way he described it: it had, like fallen off his hip bones oh, and shit, yeah. so he didn't have like an ass anymore. Oh, lordy, just yeah. to get to that depth for yeah. your character, you'd have to love your craft. Yeah. I mean, wh- I'm glad there's savages out oh, there sending it. Definitely for all yeah. us uh, middle yeah. of the road folk. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> so we can like, sit on our comfy little couch and yeah. watch, you, watch you do your shit. Dudes yeah. like what, Dwayne the Rock Johnson are only <laughs> doing one role, and uh-huh. they're not fucking cutting down to like. <laughs> Piano, uh, like machinists that are skinny to do them. Like, That's true. The rock yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. as slim as he possibly get. He's one eighty five. He would be definitely oh, at one eighty five. I think he's like two sixty five. Yeah, he like, is. Yeah, yeah. Full, yeah, he's full Brock size. Yeah, like. six four. Like yeah. it's man, almost I, those two together would look very similar. Yeah. He's got like size sixteen feet or something yeah, crazy too, dude. doesn't he? It's a big dude. I can't remember if I was if we, I've, I was talking about it on the podcast or out. Side, but what I was talking about um, the size of those WWE dudes. Like it's it's ridiculous how big those guys are. Like all of them, like Goldberg is sort of like two eighty and six four, and Undertaker's fucking a massive dude as well. Like they're all hundred and twenty, you know, mm. kilo plus dudes who are six two, six three, six four. Some of them way bigger, up to seven feet. D bowl is a hell of a drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's the thing where Look you at see. those Mr. Olympias, man. Oh, yeah. People yeah. get fucking like human beings can get enormous. Mm, Have you seen steroids. those photos of like on steroids? Have you seen those photos of um the world's fattest man in 1908 and shit like that? Mm, he's no. he's not that big, man. Yeah, he's right. smaller than Paul Gallant. Like yeah. Gallant, the G train. <laughs> and um and now we have got. Enormous people, mm, man! Mm. Fucking huge! Yeah. Like jack up all of those, te- all of those hormones, mm. and you know we can get to insane levels of size now. Fuck Definitely, and I think see, it'll yeah. only increase more and more as we start fucking with genes and we start yeah. fucking with like For exoskeletons sure. and For shit. Sure. <laughs> like we're gonna be a bunch of like fucking crazy mechanical ants, souped yeah. up. Souped up. Yeah. And why wouldn't? Why would you not want to be though? You know, like well, in, it's in kind sort of you can't sense. stop progress. If you yeah. look at how human beings are, it's what it's what we do. We have to busy ourselves with progress. It's, exactly. There's would no you, you would, no other option than to continue going forward. Okay. You you would microchip up if it got to that to, sort of towards singularity stage. If, like. if it, you wouldn't be the only person resisting it. No, if everybody was no. On. If I could, if I could conclusively sort of say that I was convinced by the research and the literature and all that sort of stuff to a, a stage where, you know, I thought I have confidence in this. I, I would absolutely. Like, yeah. This is a level up here. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if it would the, honestly become one of those things that's like. If you walk around a place for long enough, if if nobody wears, say, shorts somewhere, and eventually you'll be like, fuck, man, I feel like a dickhead walking around in these shorts all the time. Nobody wears shorts, so I'm going to start wearing jeans. And 
you know, that's, that's human beings in a nutshell. We just, we, we need to conform and we need to, to sort of have social cohesion. So if everybody's running around in exoskeleton suits and everybody's like a different sort of entity to just base bi- biology, you're not going to be the only grandpa there just resisting it going, no, there no. Would be, uh, there, there would be, though. There would be. There would be heaps of those people. There but would be. They would die out generationally. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Th- those people get left behind. Like, so... Absolutely. I don't know. I think, you know, eventually it, it won't be a decision of like, do I do it or do I not? It'll mm. just become more and more implemented into your everyday life just in the way that smartphones and technology have now. Now, and you just don't notice it. It's it's seamless, and yeah. eventually, we you know we're we're fucking with things that to to us now seem crazy. Even mm. like in the fortunate world where we are, where we do have the like finances and things like that to be able to afford that. Even the, those things like f- smartphones and tablets and stuff. Even if you're a absolute gimp, baby boomer with no sort of technological mind or how to use computers, you've got anything, a smartphone. They have a smartphone or an account, iPad yeah. or like a, own an iPad, yeah. for example, and. <laughs> it's fit in or you're fucked, basically, yeah. isn't it? With it, where yeah, it's like, well, yeah, oh, yeah, how do yeah. I pay my bills? What I've got to fucking go into the branch? Like, I'm not yeah. doing that. Here, bang, yeah. bang, bang. Like, yeah. Geez, that that made it easier. Exactly. Oh, man, I just, man, that just left, leveled up my left, shit. Left by <laughs> yeah. the wayside, for yeah. sure. And it's and it's like you know, I've worked in offices before where you see that fucking people basically, you know, in the in their old older age. They might not have it. That you receive a letter into an office saying, you know, like I, I tried to do something with my bank account doing this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, 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 you need to do this online. And you're telling an 80-year-old person that like, oh, the only way to – you yeah. need to download the app. And the 80-year-old person is like, what the fuck? They should like, have a special exemption from that because, you know, I, I can I totally concur that if you're at that stage in your life – like you don't, you, they, they should still leave that option open for yeah. you to. Yeah, but to eventually, like all of the having... 60, 60 year olds now have a smartphone and they That's know what, what an app is and oh, shit. So when it they're easy. eighty, it'll be like, yeah, it'll still. Be, it, it Everyone knows technology ev- then. Exactly, yeah. it'll yeah. be phased out by yeah. that point. The uh, an older gentleman on the train home, uh, catching public transport from work, hits it up going. Uh, where, where's the post office? It's on the train out of nowhere. We're on like the the Shawcliffe line it's like oh well I was like oh mate, not sure mate there's, def- there's definitely a few around like just caught me off guard with the most random sort of question and um, he's like oh, I think there's one at uh, I think there's one at Clayfield like this suburban Brisbane I was like okay well you're going to need to go and get off at this station here and jump on a connected train if you want to head out there we go breeze straight through he's like yeah yeah no worries we go straight through the station I was like alright well he didn't get off like he's not going to Clayfield <laughs> <laughs> Fucking keep, keeps on the train line. He's like, catches on like that he didn't get off. And he's like, hang on, where, where are we now? And with the next station along, I said, oh, well, you know, he's like, is there one here? I'm like, Mate, there's one up at, uh, like, there's that neighbouring suburb up there, like a couple of strollers. He's like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I think there's one over the other side, isn't there? And he was just going wondering where this generation, pick up your phone, tick, tick, tick. Yeah. There, there's one here. Here's the directions for exactly. that. Exactly. I'll follow it on my little fucking smartphone app on there. Yes. And be like, yep, that's me walking there. Yep. Here's this street here. Mm. And he was already left behind. Yeah. yeah. This old dude. I'm like, fuck, is that how you spending your day out there? Just still exactly. trekking confused, around. Yeah, yeah. Confused as fuck. Yeah. Like yeah. seeing everyone with headphones on the train and stuff. He's like, no one's here having conversations. No yeah. one said g'day to me or like anything like that. Yeah. I think back then it would have been a far more sociable Australia. Mm. And it'd be it'd be really unfortunate if you, you know, it was that time where you were sort of just left left out of it because of your age, mm. and you didn't really have a choice because you were too old and fucking yeah. confused to operate a, a smartphone. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're wandering around lost on the trains, and all these little kids are like are looking at computer screens, and they all seem mm. to know where they're going. Yeah, <laughs> like definitely for sure. You're just uh, like I'm fucked. Like yeah. everyone like. Nah, listen, old man, it's too late, man. Don't fucking get a tablet Was he like anything. an old like, hobo? Or? No, man, no, no. Like no. just a, a half-decent oh, dressed okay. gentleman, just an old bloke. Yeah, oh, that's doing heartbreaking. His shit. Fuck yeah, it was, that's man. It really was. I'm like, <laughs> damn, son. And it made me even think about technology at the time. I'm like, this dude's just... Yeah, you like, don't this, you don't realise what we've got now you know, to make our lives easier. Mate, the, day, the day it was, too, was the day when we got uh, sent home from work because trop- Tropical Cyclone Debbie was hitting southeast Queensland. So he's out in the bucketing rain looking for a post office. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so like, I, How honestly, old do you reckon I, this guy was? Yeah. More than 75. Uh, okay. Se- like 70, definitely 70s, man. Guaranteed 70s for sure. Oh, yeah. That and uh, he's out there butting so around. I'm sad. like, I felt like asking him and just being rude with him, but I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I felt like going, 
mate, it must be a fucking important letter if you're out in this. Like, because it was <laughs> pissing down rain, like at the time too. I'm like, what do you need to send to the post office now <laughs> at your stage in your life? Who the fuck needs he a might, letter here? Might still day? pay his bills at the post office. Who maybe. Oh, maybe. They getting, cut his power yes. off. Like, <laughs> didn't make it. Like, oh. oh, man. Uh, something, that, something to look forward to anyway. That always baffles me <laughs> yeah. where you see people rocking up with their bills at the post office and like they're mm. turning up to the desk and, you know, like and paying their bill there. It's yeah, like, man. That won't be an you, option yeah, eventually. Do you know what like we have around to mm. make your life easier now? Why are, you still, why, why are we still doing that? It's crazy. Mm. No, it's old bloke. It just bummed me out. So where, whether he is, like wherever he is now, I hope he's safe and warm and, mm. yeah, we've got... God bless you, sir. How good Looking at uh, UGIS on his <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> He's there, yeah. He's on UGIS fucking a flashlight on with, his couch with a bag on an of iPad. Vi- with a bag of Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> Just sending that he, it. Yeah, that he bought on the dark Send web. He used, yeah. used up all his prepaid data and yeah. he needs to ask you directions because <laughs> he can't get the internet going. It's just sl- Serial sliding yeah. into the end, just locking the wheels up, just getting ready to bang into the wall, not slowing uh, down at no. all. <laughs> Fuck, I wish I, they had Wi-Fi yeah. on these trains, mate. Do you know where, we're gonna, yeah. where to- our post office is? Totally misread him. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Good crazy that they've got like a little gps tracking system on you at all times really it is that's what it is it's absolutely yeah. right. if, if, if there was some way to tap into that you could in real time watch like your friends family mm. or whoever it's essentially like uber just, yeah, yeah you're right an uber, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that want, goes to show man, they'll, have, they'll have apps with that where people can install shit on their, uh, yeah. their partner's phone and be well, like, that's like nah, what every you time doing? every time you get prompted to say, oh, select location services and shit. It's like, well, you can already do it anyway. Yeah, like, yeah. there's no difference in if I say, oh, yeah, you can look at where I'm at or yeah. no, 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 you can't do that. Oh, okay, we won't. So people, people <laughs> like, <don't>. fuck <laughs> off. Yeah. Like, you do yeah. something bad enough, yeah. they'll, they'll pull that shit exactly. out. For sure. Exactly. It's, and yeah. you'd never know about it. You'd never, ever know about it, you know? And uh, you know what I've noticed a lot more in recent times? I don't know if you guys have, but I'll be having conversations about shit and I don't know if you're aware, but apps like Facebook and stuff like that can actually open your microphone and record what's going on when you're using the app. So they use it for targeted marketing and stuff like that. They listen out for keywords and shit. And um, it's been on point lately. Like I was talking to my dad about logbooks the other day. And then all of a sudden these ads on my YouTube clips were coming up about, um, you know, there's an app that you can do that you can do log bo- logbooks now on, on your application and shit like that. Oh, what? And, uh, wow. Yeah, man. Oh, and that it, is it's, fuck. It's t- fucking scary. Bro, and and it, there's, there's you know, this it. big brother element that's like, wow, this is fucking happening. Mm. And um, it's, yeah, we're in it. There's like a, a thing that I was listening to on a podcast the other day that the Australian tax office are actually rolling out to – because there's such a huge, huge, obviously, amount of, you know, shit that people just don't claim in their taxes properly and that's an enormous amount of revenue for the Australian tax office that they use some really, really high-tech technology which scans everybody's individual, like, um, it's called, like, big data or something like that, but um, where they, you know, if you've got a uh, an eBay account or a you know a Airbnb account or a you know Gumtree account or you're selling anything online like they can you know do data matching and the, for the Facebook example that you just used before it has this like algorithms or whatever where it can process like go through your photos and like if it you're sort of you know claiming that you're earning thirty thousand dollars a year but you're posting photos of you know yourself and your four kids and they're all in private school uniforms and you're standing with a nice car in the background then that sort of puts you in a bucket of like this is uh someone worth a further look at Mm. you know like i mean so that you're like legitimately the australian tax office is using this technology to you know, to figure out who they should mm. target their shit towards. And it's wild. Like I think of my Instagram account as like a modern day photo album in, in a sense. Like I, I really see no other need to store endless no. amounts of digital photos other than what's on my Instagram page. So that's sort of what, what I figure it as. But that is a public forum where companies, you know, government agencies – Every every single person is is able to see that. Mine's a public profile, mm. and um, yeah, I guess it's just the way that 
we're heading, you know, no, no privacy and that your photo album exists on a place where everybody can access it and, you, and the tax agency can use it to see if yeah. you're a fraud. There's potential for <laughs> other people too to just start screenshotting and cropping your photos and there's a dude in Kazakhstan who's... Dan- Jerking off Dan- to my yeah. photos. Who's that Danny Spew? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Putting his legs uh, up over his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, with that fam, yeah. what do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave you with that Kazakhstani boy jerking off over Danny and wrap up uh, this special 420 edition. Yeah, it's been a good hit up. <laughs>